Hi, my name is Senga Lindsay. I'm a landscape architect here in North Vancouver. We're on an edible green roof. Today is hiving our bees day. We're in late March. The rain has finally stopped. It's a little bit mild. It's about 10 degrees, early evening. Perfect time to introduce our package of bees, which is right here. Here they are in this uh, drafting tube. There's about 2.3 pounds of them in here with a queen. She's in a cage, which I'll pull out in a little bit and show you. And they just arrived from New Zealand a few days ago. They're very hungry, thirsty, stressed a bit, so we're going to get them into their new home as quick as possible. So this is our setup, and if you want to know fully how to set up a, a beehive for a new colony, visit my, one of my YouTube videos from last April when we did this other hive just next to me. So the first thing we do is we pull off the, the brick or a weight that sits on the cover which protects our hive from the elements. We have an inner cover here which provides ventilation into the hive during the summer. I'm pulling that off. Inside here we've got our setup already. We've got a frame feeder in here which is basically filled with a sugar syrup mixture with a little float on top. The sugar mixture is important for bees, especially these guys that have just come, because we've had to put in some fresh frames here with no honeycomb drawn out yet. So these guys are going to need a lot of carbohydrates, which is what the sugar syrup does, until the nectar starts flowing in the flowers. The flowers haven't quite come out yet in Vancouver. I also had the luxury of being able to save some drawn out comb with some honey that this beehive here had produced last winter, which is great. I have a few of those frames. So that will immediately get these bees set up to start uh, their queen laying eggs right away. Plus they'll have a ready supply of honey and extra carbohydrates to get them well on their way. Finally, we have a pollen patty, which is just like people, bees need protein in order to raise their young and to be healthy as well. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a couple of these frames so that I can actually dump the tube of bees in here with her queen. Get on my protective suit here. I expect they're pretty docile at this point. Early evening they tend to slow down. It's getting a little cooler. They tend to be a little more sluggish, but just in case, I'm just going to suit up here and then show you how to uh, pull out the cage, the queen cage, and hive this new beehive. Okay. First thing I do is the bees are all clustered quite tightly at the top here. They're, they're keeping warm, especially as we're out exposed right now. I'm going to give the uh, tube a good, a good thumping. What that does is it drives the bees to the bottom of the tube. They literally slide down. Because what I want to do is I want to pull this green tab with the queen cage attached to the bottom. Because what I want to do is I want to grab the queen, make sure, number one, that she's healthy and alive. Last year I did have one dead queen in my package. And of course they've super stapled this one so that we don't lose the cage inside the tube. Just gonna pull out a couple the last staple here so we can get the cage out. Another couple of good shakes. I can hear them roaring in there a little bit. They're probably not too happy. Now I've been feeding these guys sugar water to keep them going until I was able to hive them because they've been here for approximately a week between coming from New Zealand and arriving at our doorstep here. So things are a little sticky, typical for bees. Another good shake. And I'm going to pull the 
queen up, out through the mass of bees. Because what I do is once I hive the bee, uh, once I put the queen in the cage, it'll be quite easy to uh, dump the bees in and they are just going to follow literally wherever the queen goes. So you can see they're already sort of clinging to her because they will follow her wherever the wherever her pheromones are. I'm going to keep them in there for a bit. I just want to check the status of her. Right now they're probably a little disoriented, wondering where their queen's gone. And there she is. She's alive and well. A little close up if you can. You can see her gathering around in her cage. That's a good thing. What they've been doing is they've been feeding her. You can see her right in there. They've been feeding her and maintaining her during her journey. The reason they keep her in a cage is because the breeders, they specifically breed queens for packages of bees. The queen needs to be isolated for a few days with her colony in order for their, them to accept her smell or her pheromones and in turn accept her so that when she does go in the hive, they won't actually kill her, which is an interesting uh, way that nature works with queens and bees. So I'm just gonna take the cage and I'm going to stick that cage onto the frame. I'm just going to leave the tag out here. The reason I'm doing this is because I want, again, the queen to get acclimatized to the hive, the workers to get acclimatized to her and the hive as well. In a few days, I'm going to release her out of her cage. But for now, we're just going to keep her as is. So for the rest of the hive, Simply another couple of thumps. And right now they're looking for her. Simply turn over the tube. A good thumping. Get all of them out of there. You want to take a really good look in the hive. They're not really going to go anywhere. You can see. They're sensing that their queen is in there, so they're not going to go too far. And any ones that are drifting around right now will find the scent and go into the hive all on their own. There's some in this tube still, so I'll put it at the entrance to the hive, and they'll make their way out of the tube and into the hive to settle in. As you can see, these guys are already hard at work. They found the honey. They're probably very thirsty, very stressed. And they're starting to eat already, which is a great sign. I'm going to replace the rest of the frames in here very carefully, very slowly. These guys aren't really interested in going anywhere right now. I can see them just sort of spreading out between the frames. Probably quite happy after their journey. Lots of food. Lots of room to grow. Once I release the queen in about four days, she'll be ready. She's already impregnated, so she'll be starting to lay eggs in a few days afterwards, and in probably two weeks, we'll start seeing larva and brood being produced. That's it. That's how we hive a beehive. We just simply, as a tip, last minute tip, the one thing you do want to do is on your inner cover, you see a little slot that allows the bees to go in and out. What we want to do at this point is turn it over, block that entrance. I'm going to do that in, a, in a, about 20 minutes after these bees all get in there. And uh, so we want to block all the entrances in a couple hours for a couple days just so that they get used to where they are, settle in, and then I'll unblock the entrances after that and then they can start going out to forage. And that's it. That's how you hive a beehive. If you want any more information, please visit my website at www.sangadesigns.com. I also have a YouTube channel under Sanga Lindsay. We've got updates on our beehives as well as how to prep and maintain your hives during 
all seasons. Thanks for watching.